In this last part of the lesson, we are going to talk about cylinders. Now, I'm not talking about elementary cylinders like a can you learned in geometry. I'm talking about more sophisticated cylinders. Let's start by having you graph x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 equals 1, and we're going to have you graph that in R2. Now, R2 simply means the Cartesian plane or the xy plane as you know it. So if you saw this, everybody would know they needed to draw an ellipse, as you see here. Now, suppose I ask you to graph this in R3, three-dimensional space. Well, then it takes on a whole different shape. See, there is no z here, so we think of x squared over 4 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. That relationship is going to hold for all of z. Now, my first shot at drawing this is not really how a cylinder is constructed. It does help with visualization. So I'm going to draw this ellipse, and then I'm going to stack a bunch of ellipses on top of each other, like this. And as I stack them, you start to see this cylinder shape. But that is not what constructs a cylinder. Now, if I shoot a line through all of these ellipses, see if I shoot them around, then you start to get a sense of this shape. And then this particular cylinder does resemble that of a can. So what is a cylinder? Let's take a closer look at the definition. A cylinder is a surface, that's what we're talking about, that consists of all lines called rulings. Now the lines are these pink lines that cut through all of the ellipses. And these lines are all parallel to a given axis. In this case, you can see that these pinkish purple rulings are all parallel to the z-axis and they all pass through a plane curve now in this case the plane curve means a curve on the plane and that is an ellipse so this is an elliptical cylinder with rulings parallel to the z-axis and that's how you would identify that shape now we're going to graph the second equation in r2 and that first shape is just a good old-fashioned parabola facing down. Notice I've drawn the y and the z axis with the z intercept of 3, 6, 9. Let's take a look at it in R3. So the stacking business is always deceiving because again that's not how it's constructed but if you stack a bunch of parabolas going back in space you will get a sense of this tunnel-like that would be the cylinder. But the actual cylinder are going to be all the rulings. In this case, the rulings are going to be parallel to the x-axis. So if I draw a ruling here and a ruling here, each one of these are supposed to be parallel to the x-axis. Draw it around, and you start to get a better sense of that tunnel shape. And the name of this, well, it's a parabola, and it's a cylinder. So it's a parabolic cylinder with rulings parallel to the x-axis. And again, that's how I'd have you identify it. Well, let's graph the next one in R2 and R3. So initially you can see z is the sine of x. So we all know that sinusoidal shape. It goes like this and continues in that pattern. Uh, comes over here and continues in the pattern. Okay, you get the idea. Now we assist our drawing with some stacking. So I'm like stacking some of these sign shapes. And then the actual cylinder itself are a bunch of the rulings that are parallel to the, what are they parallel to? Well, it's missing a Y. So it's sinusoidal for all Y. Y is coming out in this direction. Here I deviated from the traditional way that y is oriented. I did that because otherwise it's really hard to draw. But anyway, I'm allowed to draw it any way I want. Now so here we have sort of a wavy ramp. This is called a sinusoidal cylinder with rulings parallel to the y-axis. In the last one, I'm going to graph y equals 3. Now y equals 3 for an elementary school student is in R1, and that's simply a point on the y-axis, y equals 3. In R2, that's just a horizontal line. Y equals 3 for all x. And finally, in R3, we're going to draw the line y equals 3. A couple different ways we could draw it here. I could draw it like this, 
y equals 3. And then I'm going to draw a bunch of rulings parallel. Now, we could actually draw them parallel to the x, but they're also parallel to the z, so we can use either terminology here. But all of the rulings are parallel, and I hope that you see that we make a plane. This kind of plane is actually a cylinder. We could have drawn y equals 3 like this. And then when we drew our rulings, they again would be parallel to x and also parallel to z going down. And we also have the same plane. I would prefer to call this a plane, but we can actually call it a line cylinder with rulings parallel to the x-axis.